Well, shareholders are preparing to confront some of Australia's biggest companies over their support for The Voice. The Sydney Morning Herald today reports that the Australian Shareholders Association predicts shareholders will be asking many companies who support The Voice whether donating to the Yes camp will do anything to earn their money. Joining me now is Liberal National Senator for Queensland and one of the leaders of Liberals for No, Paul Scar. Welcome to the program, Paul. So how will this take shape? How will the shareholders be confronting some of Australia's biggest companies over their support for The Voice? Well, Shari, you make exactly the right point that Australian retail shareholders, so these are the mum and dad shareholders, have started revolting against the fact that boards of some of Australia's biggest com companies have decided to use their shareholder funds to support the yes side in the campaign. So what is going to play out over the next 12 months is that representatives of those Australian shareholders will be turning up at annual general meetings and they will be asking the boards of those companies how they have justified, how they've justified using the shareholders' funds to support the yes campaign. It doesn't matter which side of the campaign it is. Mm. Directors on boards of companies have an obligation to use their funds in the best interest of shareholders as a whole. Mm. And will it be transparent? Will the companies on the whole disclose how much money, how many millions of dollars? Because we know that the likes of Qantas, West Farmers, Rio Tinto and BHB have all said they're pouring millions of dollars into the Yes campaign. Is the full amount going to be transparent? Well, I think most of the large lists of public companies have disclosed. So, for example, BHP giving $2 million, Rio Tinto $2 million, West Farmers $2 million. So if it hasn't been disclosed by other lists of public entities, it should be disclosed. And they should be absolutely transparent about how much money they're giving to their shareholders mm. and to the wider Australian community, to be frank. Is another aspect of this that the voice issue is opening up a divide between the Liberal Party and Corporate Australia? Because on the whole, Corporate Australia does seem to be supporting the voice and obviously the Liberals under Dutton are opposing the referendum. Well, Shari, I think a lot of us in the coalition, including myself, and I say this as someone who was a company secretary of a listed public company. So I have a background experience dealing with retail shareholders. And we are just quite baffled as to why corporate Australia has bought in so heavily onto one side of this debate. And one of the risks for corporate Australia is when you do this, then when you come to parliament and make submissions with respect to your core business, it diminishes your accountability, it diminishes your persuasiveness when you've bought into these extraneous social issues. And that's the danger for corporate Australia. I also interviewed John Howard last week, former Prime Minister John Howard, and he made the point that Australians don't like to be bullied. And, and he said that when you've got sporting codes and companies, and, and he actually said the example of Qantas painting yes on the side of some of its planes, he said he described it as egregious. So he made the point that Australians don't like to be told how to think. Do you think that there is an an element of this, that that actually all of this campaigning could backfire because Australians would feel pressured into how to vote and how to think? Shari, I couldn't agree more. And it doesn't matter whether it's a large corporation, a sporting code, non-government organisation, a school or university, and some of the stories I've heard coming out of our schools and universities as to how they're dictating to students as to how students of voting age should vote, it is being very counterproductive. And it's actually playing into the no camps hands because, as you say, Australians have a wonderful anti-authoritarian streak and they do not like being told by large organisations, celebrities, sporting bodies, how they should or should not vote. Mm. So you're a leader of the Liberals for No campaign. Do you think there is also an obligation on the coalition to outline how it will try and end or improve ind Indigenous disadvantage? Because at this point, it does look like the referendum's going to fail. Oh, absolutely, Shari. And look, I think there's an obligation upon every, everyone involved in politics across the broader civic society. If the, if the referendum does go down, 
and it's mm. certainly looking that way, then there's an obligation on all of us to come together and track out the pathway forward. And from my perspective, one of the key things to do, and Senator Nampajimpa Price has been very clear with respect to this, is to look at what funds are going to address these issues in especially remote and regional Aboriginal communities and, and making sure we're getting bang for our buck and focusing on making changes at the grassroots level and make sure every dollar of government money is being spent wisely and is making a difference at the coalface. From my mm. perspective, that should be the focus. Mm. Look, we spoke earlier on in the show about how uh, new figures out today and the New South Wales Department of Planning confirmed these figures. 38,000 uh, land claims... Uh, Aboriginal land claims that have not yet been settled. And this is just in the state of New South Wales alone. We don't have the figures for the rest of the country. Do you think revelations around this are also going to impact the referendum? Oh, absolutely. I think it all plays in uh, to the same vibe, just as the Western Australian cultural heritage legislation, which was a disaster, played into the, into the vibe, just as the comments which were made in Victoria around the justice system. Also, uh, I think all of these things lead to people asking themselves, especially those in the undecided camp or in the soft yes camp, mm. what does this all mean for Australia? And I think that's the question they're asking. And as soon as they ask that question and they find there's no detail or they go into the background around the dialogues and the calls for treaty, reparations, percentage of GDP, that is when people are moving from the soft yes camp into the no camp or hardening in the no camp. All right. All right, we're out of time. Paul Scar, thank you very much for joining me.